The Senate just a few days ago passed unanimously a resolution asking to open up the Capitol again uh, to the American people, our constituents who still are not able to come to the Capitol to, uh, to visit with members of Congress, to sit in the gallery, to participate even in the State of the Union. It was a unanimous resolution in the Senate. There is a companion resolution by Congressman Style that was filed, H.R.S. 961, that would do the same thing and express from the House's side what the Senate just expressed, and that is it's time to open up the Capitol to the public again. The Senate Republicans and Democrats came to an agreement to do it. I would just ask that we do the same and show the American people that the people's house is open to the people of the nation. If the Senate can come to an agreement on it, again, I don't think there's anything controversial in the resolution, uh, but I would ask that we could bring that up as well. And I would yield. I thank the uh, gentleman for that question. And the answer to it is the Office of the Attending Physician and the Sergeant Arms in both the Senate and the House are looking at that, uh, both from a health standpoint and from a security standpoint. I think all of us agree that the American public's access to the Capitol ought to be as fulsome as possible, uh, uh, given constraints of health concerns and of security uh, concerns. And so I will, uh, I, I join the gentleman in saying, and I've said to the press, as soon as we can do that responsibly, we ought to do it. And so I agree with the gentleman. Oh, I appreciate the gentleman's and I want to add something. And, and I would yield again. That is of great concern to me. And I hope we have agreement in this House. And I hope we have agreement in the United States Senate. I have been shocked, deeply saddened, when your party passes a resolution and tells the American people that January 6 was, legi was legitimate political discourse. Mr. Whip, if we are telling people in this country that January 6 was legitimate political discourse, <clears throat> we're going to have great concerns about opening up this Capitol for the safety of our members for the safety of the public who wants to visit, for the safety of our staff. And I would ask my friend, do you believe that January 6th reflected legitimate political discourse? I was shocked, astounded, that a major political party in this country would tell to the American people what you saw on January 6th was legitimate political discourse. Will you please reject that concept, reject that conclusion the that what they yield? saw on January 6th had anything to do with the legitimate political discourse? Yes, I want to open up the Capitol, but I don't want to make any representation to the American people, Mr. Speaker, that what happened on January 6th bore any resemblance to what we as Americans believe is legitimate political discourse. Rightfully, Senator McConnell and your former candidate for President of the United States, Mitt Romney, rejected that out of hand. I would hope you, you and your party would do so on this floor and tell the American people, yes, we want to open up this Capitol, but do not delude yourself that anything you saw on January 6th bears any resemblance in any way to legitimate political discourse. I had not brought that up, but I am constrained to do so as we talk about opening up our capital. Yesterday, or excuse me, Tuesday night, we were in armed camp. You saw it, I saw it, we all saw it. Fence around the Capitol. Men with, uh, men and women with automatic weapons both military and civilian, because of what happened on January 6th, because of the concern they had for the safety of our democracy and of the ability of the President of the United States to come and give a State of the Union address to the assembled members of the Congress of the United States and the United States Senate. That's why all that was there. And very frankly, inexplicably, 
your party national committee passed a resolution, apparently overwhelmingly, that told the American people that January 6th was a legitimate political discourse. Would the gentleman yield, I will yield. on that? And first of all, I've been very clear from the very beginning, anyone who broke into this Capitol uh, ought to be held accountable and is being held accountable. More arrests have been made than probably uh, all of these cities where people were burning down cities across America and, and uh, this you, summer. And, that, and that's something that ought to be addressed. And, you know, your party doesn't want to talk about that. Just want to talk about January 6th. These resolutions are not about January 6th. It's allowing the American people to exercise their First Amendment right to come and meet with their members of Congress, which they're not able to do right now. And so if you look at that resolution, the head of the RNC even came out and said that's not what they were referring to, what the gentleman just alluded to. They said they were talking about the people that weren't even in the, the District of Columbia on January 6th who are being targeted right now. That's what they said that they were doing. You can go talk, take that up with them. I've been clear about what's happened to the people that broke into this Capitol and that everybody who breaks the law to be held accountable, not just the people that broke in here on January 6th, but also the people that burned cities down over the summer of 2020 who haven't been held accountable. And that's something that angers people all over the country. They want to see the law equally carried out to people who broke the law, no matter where they were, here or in cities across America. So. If you want to criticize one side of it, at least be willing to criticize the other side of it, too. I surely have. I haven't heard it from your side. Be more than happy to hear the gentleman talk about people who were shooting at cops, killed cops, beat up people in streets, burned down police stations, government buildings in cities, took over cities, and haven't been held accountable. Shouldn't they also be held accountable? I say both should be held accountable. Does the gentleman agree with that? And I would yield. Mr. Speaker, the equivalency that my friend from Louisiana tries to make between citizens, some who committed crimes, but citizens who are coming because they're seeing their children lives taken because of the color of their skin. And what happened on January 6th to undermine our democracy, our Constitution, and our election of a president of the United States reflects the resolution the Republican National Committee passed. Legitimate political discourse. They weren't talking about the people. Nobody saw, some people saw, obviously, the president incite those people to come from where that political discourse, that discussion, it sounded like incitement to me, maybe not to you. And they came from the White House at the President's instruction, Mr. Speaker, go down to the Capitol, stop the steal, give them hell, fight like hell, instructing the Vice President of the United States to do what the Vice President of the United States concluded was illegal and with, not within his power, and came into the Capitol calling for the life of the Vice President and the Speaker of this House. There is no equivalency, but they continue, Mr. Speaker, to make that equivalency, to justify what was done on January 6th. That, oh, well, everybody does it. No, they don't. It's the first time in history, <coughs> history that it's happened. And for a national committee, when the Whip and I are talking about what I think we both want to do, open up this capital, make it more accessible, have people come in, gun-free, weapon-free, come into this capital, see their democracy in action. That resolution was read by the American people as, oh, it's okay. Legitimate political, there was nothing about January 6th which was legitimate political discourse, including what the President of the United States had to say. At that point in time, Donald Trump. That wasn't legitimate at all. Sixty courts determined Joe Biden was elected, and he still to this day lies to the American people. And sadly, too many people believe him.
which led to January 6th and the violence. And I, 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 I'm sure that the whip believes they ought to be held accountable if they came in here and waved guns at people and uh, uh, killed a police officer. And I appreciate that he said that. And if he believes, as Romney believes, as McConnell believes, McConnell didn't say they were talking about the people talking in the political discourse, and should we do this, should we do that? McConnell responded to that resolution exactly as I have, understanding exactly what it meant. Inexplicable. And very frankly, if we're going to open up this Capitol, we need to have all of us tell every American we're opening the Capitol to peaceful, sure, political discussion. That's what this place is all about. That, Mr. Speaker, is what this discourse is about, differences of opinion, how we resolve them, how we reach consensus, how we hopefully bring people together. But not by waving racist flags, not by hanging uh, 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 gallows, gallows. Uh, in front of the Capitol. That's not how we do it. And we are all, all 435 of us, reject it out of hand. Not in any way try to uh, make it look like, well, some other people did this and some other people did that and therefore it's okay. They attacked our democracy, our Constitution, this country. They were traitors. And we ought to all reject that kind of conduct out of hand. Not try to rationalize it by some other group did this and some other group did that. People with grievances. The constitutional, it does not guarantee you being able to shoot at people. Police or non-police. It doesn't justify destroying property. That's criminal activity. I agree with that 100 percent. And no city was burned down. A little bit of hyperbole there, Mr. Speaker. Were the things done that shouldn't have been done? Yes. Were the things that shouldn't have been done in, in things that happened on this Capitol? Yes. But January 6th was not analogous to any of those things. It was an attempt to undermine our democracy, our Constitution, uh, and uh, the election of the President of the United States by uh, this Congress in approving what we should have no discretion one way or the other and, and that is what lawfully is done in each state and send its electors here. What President Trump kept asking Mr. Pence to do was ignore the votes of the American people, ignore uh, the lawfully uh, elected electors and the result of their deliberations. So Mr. S S I, I say to Mr. Scalise, Mr. Scalise, my friend, he's a good man. But if, you know, the famous quote is, if uh, nothing is necessary for the spread of evil, the, the, but that good men do nothing. And that's why I tell my friend, I was so appalled at the rhetoric of that Republican National Committee resolution. And what it says to people around this country who may have a grievance, who may be angry. And as McConnell interpreted it, the resolution was speaking to what happened on January 6th. Whether it was at the White House and incitement, whether it was at the White House and deployment, or whether it was here in execution of what was clearly a coordinated effort to prohibit the Congress from carrying out its constitutional duties. Expressed and acted out. So I say to my friend in conclusion, I didn't mean to get into this today, but your, your questions obviously spurred my feeling about this because, yes, we want to open up the Capitol. But I don't want to give any citizen the thought that the Capitol is being opened so they can come in here, threaten the lives of a vice president, threaten the lives of a speaker, threaten the lives of the minority leader or, 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 the, or the Republican whip or any uh, others of us. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the Republican whip is my friend. He was badly injured by a criminal who may have been deranged uh, or whatever, but no excuse, who attacked uh, because he was a Republican. 
totally unjustified, totally heinous in its execution. And he has shown, uh, uh, the whip has shown extraordinary courage, Mr. Speaker, in coming back. And I know it's been hard. It's been tough for him. Uh, and, and all of us uh, admire him for the courage he's shown in coming back and uh, condemn in the severest terms any kind of action that would have put him or any other of our members, of our staff, of the visitors to this capital at risk. So we're considering it. We want to open up. American people ought to have access to their capital. And I uh, yield back. Thank the gentleman for yielding. And just again, we condemn violence of all kinds. Political violence, uh, people that just commit violence because they want to, or they think they can get away with it, or they think somebody will bail them out if they do it. But we should do it across the board. And the, the punishment fits the crime. The laws are on the books. It's the prosecutors who go after people, and they are. In some instances, it should be in all instances. And so I'll continue to call it out on both sides. I would hope on the other side we hear that as well, not just when they see it in one place, but when they see it in all places. And I would hope we would open up the people's house and get the Capitol back open to the American people who want to and have a right to come and express their views on issues. They might want to send an email, they might want to make a phone call, but they also might want to go to the office and sign that log book and try to sit down either with the member of Congress or their staff to convey their feelings. And we just hope that happens. Again, the Senate unanimously said they want that to happen. I would hope the House would do it too. And with that, I would yield. Yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back.